Hi, I'm Brian Nairn from Bristow's Exclusive Auto Repair. We are at 4731 South Washington, soon to be at 4722 Washington. Yeah. Um, Pete recently purchased a, a building across the street from us, which is kind of uh, convenient and advantageous all at the same time. Um, we're currently month to month on a lease. Uh, the landlord has dangled dangled sale of that facility over the last 20 years, but th every time Pete gets serious about it, the guy said, nah, I don't think so, not right now. So this building came, across, uh, came open across the street, uh, actually last year he purchased it. Um, we're currently in 3,600 square feet with four repair bays and then um, some storage room. Um, very few amenities for the employees, bathroom and a front office. And Pete, <laughs> Pete furred out an office for himself a number of years ago. Uh, but this new location is 5,400 square feet, uh, very tall ceilings. Uh, it's got all kinds of great uh, lighting in it. Um, it was originally built um, by a gentleman who used to do automotive repair. And um, he didn't do the repairs as, or the, the build like he should have. Um, when we were looking to do uh, some tenant improvements, we, we, we found that uh, there was a lot of cracking in the floor where the hoist would be bolted in. We uh, did a little core sample and found in one area, which was about 20 feet long and I don't know, eight feet wide, it was only about an inch and a half thick concrete. Well, I'm not a concrete person, but I know well enough that an inch and a half is, is uh, not enough to, to bolt a, you know, a, a 5,000 pound hoist with a 4,000 pound car on it. And so, um, so we ended up cutting out of the floor um, and with that repair having to be made, we decided to put in floor HVAC system uh, to get the, the, the nasty air out. Uh, what happens obviously with combustion, um, you got water and carbon and carbon monoxide coming out of the car and and that all just kind of spools up in the air. And especially since the roof ceiling on this is much higher than ours, um, you know, you gotta have some kind of system get that out of there. So now we'll, we'll be able to hook the cars up with a, short, with a short hose off the tailpipe and actually plug it into the floor. And then it just sucks the, all the carbon dioxide, monoxides, I should say, out the, out the door. And then also it gave us a, an opportunity to wire everything in for electric and things as such. So we're pretty excited about that because uh, we'll have a little bit bigger uh, waiting room for our customers to come in and, and relax while we're uh, diagnosing and repairing their cars. Um, we're gonna build in a second bathroom so that our technicians will have their own, their own uh, room to not only uh, dress, dress in and dress down, but have their own bathroom. Um, by the way, our bathroom is like immaculate because we've also found through um, time uh, we like clean bathrooms and we know that our customers like bathrooms and there's a and there's a stereotype with with certain professions and one of those things with with uh, automotive repair facilities is everything's greasy and everything's there's a pile of parts everywhere and it's dirty and kind of scary and um, that's not the way it is at our shop at all Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. It's totally on point. Well, um, just because personally that's how we like it anyway, but when you look at the numbers, when you look at what people uh, are looking for uh, with automotive repair, um, like I mentioned one time before, about 90% of all the decision making related to automotive in the household is, is left well, not left to the, the woman in the house, but the woman usually has uh, some influence and about 90% is the number. So 90% of the decision making about me getting paid or people coming mm -hmm. to see me, part of that is having a clean bathroom, by all means, even if I wasn't the tidiest in the bathroom, I'd make sure that bathroom is tidy all the time. Um, but uh, so, 
we're moving from 3,600 square feet to, to 5,400 square feet at some point. Um, we've got the floor poured now and, and uh, we'll uh, wait for that to cure and then we, we have to surface the floor with a, uh, a moisture barrier and then we can put our hoists in and we can get to work. Um, we're going to do container uh, uh, office spaces inside the building and that way we, can, uh, we don't have to re-engineer the, the, the interior office spaces that are already there. Our hope was to go second floor with what was already there, but again, when they did the build out, they, they didn't do it. They weren't looking far enough ahead. So, when yeah. When you say container, like a fold out, like truck container office? Or like a steel a container on the back of a yeah. trailer, yeah. Okay. There's a, um, those are pretty cost effective, and, and they, uh, there's a lot of places that have, you know, the kits and, and the instructions for really like doing it yourself almost. So, so, um, uh, Pete uh, is going to generate a couple of offices uh, in a container and, mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll have a lot more room to, to, to go from uh, four hoists to potentially eight hoists. Uh, we're really busy right now. We're up about 18% for the year, which is a lot in automotive. Um, so I'd like to think that we're getting more efficient. We're getting smarter. Uh, uh, people, are, uh, people are telling us so by their patronage. Um, I don't have the luxury of patting myself on the back. Um, you know, we let our, peop let our customers tell us that through the feedback uh, online or feedback in person, you know. And, and, and I, always, I always welcome even critical feedback because that's how you get better. You know, you learn by your mistakes, not always by your successes. And um, um, I always, I, I do appreciate that even when it's something maybe it's hard to hear because so many people, not just in my industry, but in a lot of industries, um, they just go away. And you never get the opportunity to find out, you know, why they went away. You know, if, if, if someone could come to you and say, hey, you know, I, I just didn't think I was treated right, or, or the quote kept changing, or, or whatever the situation might be. But th that's always important, because feedback's what you need. Because um, certainly, we have, we have goals in our business, like every other business here. Our, our, our ultimate goal is make sure our customers are happy and they're satisfied, not only with the repairs that are done, but with the value they get. And, and, and part of that is, is how, they're, um, how they're communicated to. And we have, we have a, a, a belief that you know, we're in constant communication, and, and, and that's not just with the external customers, with the internal customers. Um, real quickly, so when you come into my shop, you're going to come in and you're going to tell me, Brian, I've, I've got this noise or I've got this leak. And this noise happens when this certain circumstance happens and this leak is coming from the rear. So it's my job then to glean as much information from you at the counter as I can. Um, that way I can communicate to, the to my technician um, what your symptoms are so we can get to the root of the, the problem. Now. Um, we do diagnosis, and diagnosis uh, essentially is uh, um, taking your information you provide us, getting the information from the car, whether it be a visual, physical, mechanical, or um, a data-driven feedback. And a lot of people, I, I find it kind of interesting, especially with automotive, um, a lot of people, they go, oh, you charged to look at my car? Well, yeah, we, we, we don't look at your car, we do tests, we do inspections, you know, we're doing partial disassemblies, we're using expensive software and equipment to diagnose your car, because diagnosis in the long run is cheaper than just kind of guessing. And there's a lot of shops out there that still go by the let's throw a part at it and see what sticks mentality, and, and, and it, that just doesn't work. It's like going to the doctor and saying, well, my stomach hurts. And the doctor says, hmm, well, let's just cut out your stomach and see how that works, <laughs> see if that's better. Well, you know, you'd never do that. What, what's the doctor do? The doctor says, we're gonna run some tests. We're gonna, we're gonna see what your blood looks like, you know, what your, your chemical makeup looks like. Uh, we're gonna run you on a treadmill, whatever they're gonna do. And with those tests, I don't know about you, but I always have a copay. It always costs me money.
But for some reason, there's, there's kind of a belief that, oh gosh, if you're just gonna come by and you're just gonna like look at my car, you're just gonna do it for free, right? And it's like, mm, no. And, and these are the reasons why. It's because we, we wanna save you money. We wanna do it right the first time. That's one of our other goals, is that we wanna do it right the first time. Because there's nothing worse than saying, okay, you need this and we do it, and it doesn't fix your car. And, and so that makes us look bad and, but it also, you're not really happy because you've just got done spending some money and we haven't fixed the problem. Now, part of that is in, in the delivery. It's really important from my standpoint that everything's a step. Diagno diagnosis is a step. This is the first thing we're gonna do for your car. And, and then when we find obvious problems, we need to take care of the obvious problems first. And they may fix your, your issue but there may be other things that are compounding the problem. And so it's really important to let people know that this is just the first step of maybe just a few more steps or maybe several more steps, depending on what we find. Um, uh, let's see here, I got my little notes. Keep me up here. Um, so, once I get all that information from you, then I communicate again to my technician. He, he performs tests. Um, I have currently three technicians. Uh, between the three technicians and Pete, we, we figured out we have like 121 years of experience, uh, automotive experience. And um, we have a pretty wide variety of experiences. Um, uh, guys all have their niches as far as the kind of cars they like. Uh, we do primarily European because that's just the nature of our business right now because of Pete's involvement in the driving clubs. So he, he's a driving instructor for Porsche, BMW, and Alpha, and so we see a lot of um, European. But we still see a lot of domestic, a lot of Asian uh, cars. Uh, Pete, I think he got his uh, business license in 1989 and worked at a varying uh, European and domestic places until he opened up his first facility in 96. Um, and then we moved to the location we're at right now in 98. We've been there since then. Um, but Pete's always prided himself on the ability to do a little bit of everything. Um, and so anytime you come by our shop, you're going to see, you know, just a wide variety of cars. Um, a lot of people have this impression that, you know, we do a lot of high end, which is true. We do. Um, because a lot of people from the South End who have found that they don't have to go to, to Redmond or Seattle anymore to get their high-end cars taken care of because there's competent people in South Tacoma. But we're still getting, you know, we're still getting mom and pop cars, you know, daily commuters, soccer mom vans, you know, because that's all bread and butter stuff. Um, uh, so we do um, the service work that the, your factory manual recommends the 30s 60s 90s the oil services the the brake work we do a lot of diagnosis uh, seven out of ten of our seven out of ten of our ro's have some form of diagnosis there are shops out there that will not do diagnosis whatsoever all they want to do is just do your service work jiffy lubes uh, oil can henry's those kinds of places and that's just their niche that's what they're that's what they're in it for we're in it for a varying, a varying amount of reasons. We just know that there are uh, lots of people with lots of different cars, lots of different desires, and if we can meet more of those, that's, the money comes in. Because when, when it's not race season, during, you know, the, when it rains, you, you gotta depend on other stuff. And you can't always depend on, you know, can't always depend uh, just on uh, general automotive because there are certain times of the year where, um, well, I don't know for you, I don't know for the body shops, but I know from our standpoint, you know, there are certain times of the year where people, the phone stops ringing and, and that's usually around tax time. That's usually right around the time the fair and school starts. And then it's usually right after school lets out because everybody bugs out. So, so essentially we can factor in, we can factor in about six weeks where we really have to generate our own, our own business. And so, so trying to plan ahead with big projects and things as such. Um, we have a two year, 24,000 mile warranty. Um, that's twice 
is twice the warranty that the dealership will provide most people. Um, there are some shops that give you a better warranty out there too. They're not very many, but um, it's not very often I have to exact that, uh, but, it, but it's a, a nice value. So again, it's just another, another thing we provide over and above you know, most shops, I would say. Um, let me see here. You know, let me see here. It's important, it's important to do what we do um, in a way that, again, meets those goals. Uh, making sure the customers feel like they get a good value, make sure that um, they learn something, because we think that's important. Education is really important. Um, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors about automotive repair, just like there's a lot of smoke and mirrors about other things. And we try to be as, we try to be as, as, um, as transparent as possible. I, you know, I understand in everybody's business, there are things that, you know, they're just sort of your things to know and, and there's need to know and all those kinds of things. It's in every business. Um, you know, for my customers, it's, sometimes it's not so important um, uh, specifically what parts I'm using as long as the parts I'm using uh, meet uh, our expectations because uh, I'm sure you've all done it the internet is a great is a great thing you can find a lot of information you can find a lot of things it helps us find a lot of parts weird parts because we work on a lot of weird cars mm -hmm. but it's also our enemy because there's always going to be somebody that's going to sell a widget cheaper than you I mean and y'all y'all can you can all testify that there's, there's, there's programs or parts or things out there that somebody will sell it to you for cheaper money. It's, it's just a given. What we, try to, what we try to instill with our customers is that we're going to try to put in uh, products that are going to be as good as the ones we're pulling out because we like to make sure that this may be the last time we have to replace this part. Um, because like, for instance, for brakes, um, I can get you, I can get you, if you drive a Porsche, I can get you Porsche brakes. And they say Porsche right on them, and you can feel all warm and fuzzy because it says Porsche on that caliper. And if you're ready to pay $1,200 a caliper, I can get you those calipers. Now, if you want an OEM caliper, which an OEM means original equipment manufacturing, which it means that these parts are built to the same specifications, at least that's the expectation. And there's a lot of co-packing that happens. And if you don't know what co-packing is, co-packing is um, the, same, the same outfit creates this caliper. And instead of when they, they do the finished job and they print Porsche on it, they print, you know, Zimmerman or another, you know, and they sell it in a market where it's a little less money. Same exact part. Same exact part, but it's 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 marketed differently. Um, those are the kind of parts we like to. Those are the kind of parts that we like to buy because it does a couple of things for us. It keeps the price down for me. It keeps the price down for you, and it also gives you a quality part. I, now I can I can find you a caliper for fifty bucks. You're probably not going to like it, but I can I can find you a caliper. So it's all it all depends on what you want to buy. You know, you want to buy a $150 pair of jeans, that's fine. I'll just go get mine at Kirk, you know, Kirkland at Costco for <laughs> 15 <laughs> bucks. Um, once we, once we, uh, let's see where we're at here. I'm closing in. Yep. So once we, once we've figured out what's going on with your car and we communicate back to you, I give you the, the time frames, the dollars. I also tell you this is our next step. Um, hopefully this will take care of your issue. You give me the authorization, we do the work. We, our, our goal is to get done before we say we will, that it's done right the first time, and that you drive away feeling that you, you got a good value. Um, we're always the first to say we're not the cheapest shot. Um, but we like to say that, you know, we're giving you we're giving you products that are going to be above average. We're going to give you a warranty that's above average. And again, like like we our little motto is that you know no one's 100%, but 
you work hard to make it right. And if, and if people trust you and understand that this is part of the process, they're pretty flexible. We've got a lot, a lot of long-term customers who spent tens of thousands of dollars with us. And uh, I have customers that I, are regular customers that come from Ellensburg. I have customers in Linwood. I have customers in LB that, that just, they come in for their oil changes. And how many service stations are they bypassing getting to me for an oil service? That's just because they, they trust us. Uh, we've been in business a long time. We live in a small community. If we, if we were taking people to the cleaners, we wouldn't be in business. You know, this is not Orange, California, where there's, you know, millions of people, and you know, you can hide. You know, we're we're pretty proud of what we do, and uh, you know, we'll be the first to, uh, uh, to let you know that you know we're here uh, for you, and and uh, we'll do it right. Um, so just kind of in closing, um, lots of exciting things going on. Looking forward to the move. Uh, Pete is not even exactly sure whether it's going to be like a move move or we're just expanding because he still has delusions of keeping one shop open uh, to do like service work and then the other is to do like performance and big teardowns. So he's got a lot of lofty plans and hopefully we, the people keep coming to keep the doors open. Any questions? Yes. Um, it, you know, there's lots of nomenclature in automotive. <laughs> it's crazy because on the West Coast they call one part one thing and East Coast they might call it another. But um, it's, it goes down to the whole, you get what you pay for? Really? I mean, OEM parts, OE parts from the dealer, OEM, high quality, built to the same specifications and then you've got kind of what we call white box which is like the cheapest part you can buy, most likely made in China, Mexico, or Brazil. It'll work, I can't guarantee it. you probably come see me in six months because it, it switches, it, the switch fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, uh, again, it, it's like the gene analogy. Uh, if you wanna go to Rodeo Drive and buy $150 jeans, that's your prerogative. If you wanna buy a good pair of jeans, you can go to Costco, get them for 15 bucks. It's kind of the same thing. You get what you pay for. Um, if you decide to go cheap, uh, you kind of get what you get. Uh, there's a saying that we just say among ourselves. I don't say it too often because people think you're cheeky. You can have it fast. You can have it right. You can have it cheap. Pick two. <laughs> and and I, think if you look, I think if you look at your own businesses, you all can probably agree with that. Uh, you, you know, there's just... There's only so much you can do. But then I tell people on the other hand, we can fix just about anything. It's just time and money. And, and we don't mean that to be cheeky either, but it can be done. But it's also my job to advise you, I wouldn't fix this car. I've got one at the shop right now. This gal's had it for three weeks. It's got major problems. And I'm gonna, I've left her a message when I, when I left to come here. And when I get back, I'm gonna recommend that she sell the car and not do any repairs. So that's part of my job too, is not only to sell you work, because I want to make money, but it's also to let you know what the best decision is for you and your car. So, yeah. No, no, and we always sell, we always sell you, Because there's, you, you get a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of repairs, and I know I'm just a shade over time, but this is, this is something you all ought to know. Cars do need tune-ups, they do need service work. But, but again, eight or nine out of 10 times, if your car's not running right, it has nothing to do with your tune-up. There's something else going on. And while I would love to sell you a tune-up, I, I would love more that you're happy that I sold you a, a switch that was bad that fixed your drivability problem. If you're happy with that, then I'll sell you a tune-up. Yeah, there's enough work. There's enough work on everybody's car that I don't have to manufacture repairs. So, 
Anything else? Thank you.